I needed a video idea this week so I decided to go with the tried and true 25 tips to keep you alive in 7 days to die style video. These tips could make your life easier and longer. Oh, and they aren't in any particular order by the way. Let's get into it. Number 1 is mailboxes. Mailboxes are a must search container in the early game. They generally contain books including Spear Hunter, Ranger's Guide to Archery and The Needle and Thread books. You can sell them for at least 100 dukes each. If you don't want the books specifically, it is free money and XP, but the books that spawn here can be decent ones like the Archery book that gives you more arrows back, or Needle and Thread 7 which gives you the ability to craft double clothing pocket mods. Speaking of which, number 2 is craft clothing pocket mods. At the start of the game you can craft single clothing pocket mods, each of which will open up one slot in your inventory. They're relatively cheap, with the real hindrance going to be those sewing kits in the first couple of days. Later on in the game you can make double clothing pocket mods with that book I mentioned earlier. You can have up to 3 of these mods at a time allowing you to have up to 6 inventory slots open for a really reasonable crafting cost, they are not that difficult to make at all. And if you like reasonable costs, you'll like number 3 which is the cigar, which gives you a 10% discount at the trader and gives you plus 1 strength. There's next to nothing else to put on your mouth slot so you might as well just use the cigar. You can most commonly find them at Trader Jen's because she specialises in medicine and cigars are considered medical items in this game. What isn't medicinal however, is spike traps. Spike traps are a nice early game base defence but we sometimes forget that we can build anywhere in this game, it's kind of the whole thing it's selling itself on right now. So you can just place a spike trap and force zombies to walk through it to get to you. If you keep say 10 on you on your hotbar early on, you won't be struggling with ferals and dogs anymore because they'll be very much softened up by your spike traps if you remember to carry some around, along with frames because frames are useful. Number 5 is a small one but it's efficient clay mining, yes yes obey the clay the gods demanded, but there is a trick you can do to speed it up a little bit. Soil is weaker than topsoil and it gives the same amount of clay, so if you can get down to the second layer of clay or some farmland and mine there, it's got 20% less health and it could save you a hit, which matters a lot when you're mining large amounts of clay. Number 6, this one's actually for experienced players who maybe just forgot or didn't notice something, uh, but you can actually craft gunpowder without a chemistry station. It can be made in your inventory or a workbench but it costs twice as much, but it can be done. I only meant this because I had like 1500 hours in this game before I actually noticed I could do that. Number 7, engines and car batteries. Cars have a 25% chance of dropping an engine and a separate 25% chance of dropping a battery. You break them with a wrench when they are in what's called damage state 1. This is the middle damage state between the three, not the full car, not the bare frame, the middle one, damage state 1. Buses and trucks have a 75% chance to give you an engine and a 60% chance to give you a battery. Number 8, if you know a schematic or have read a book before, the icon next to it will be open. If it's new and you don't know it, it'll be a closed book. Number 9, skinning animations are slow. If you can master the art of looking away to start your attack and then pulling the camera back into the block and then pulling it back up in time to start the next attack, you can harvest much much faster without that annoying animation. You can also power attack with wrenches to harvest faster and yes, both of these will give you the full yield, don't worry. Number 10 is possibly the smallest tip I could ever give someone in this game, but I get this question every single time I stream, and it's how to unlock perks without moving your mouse over to the little icon. You can unlock a perk without actually selecting and clicking on the purchase icon by having the perk open and just pressing W. This may be different on certain keyboards, but whatever your craft hotkey is, it's probably that. While we're on the topic of very small tips that I often get asked about in live streams, Number 11 is how do I do this with trader doors? It's actually quite easy, if you just double press E as you walk through, it'll open instantly and close behind you. It's much faster than waiting for it to open and closing it behind you. Very helpful if you're playing Insane Nightmare and being chased. Speaking of being chased, number 12, don't drive on Horde Knight. If you drive around on Horde Knight, the game will purposefully spawn a lot of vultures to rip you to pieces. This is intentional design to stop you using your vehicles on Horde Knight. Unfortunate for some, but I'm just the messenger. Number 13, a bit of a weird one, um, the console version of this game has not been updated in over 5 years. If you're watching this video and you're playing console, this video is not going to be helpful for you at all. Number 14, paper. If you want to craft shotgun shells, you're going to need paper. But what are some good sources of it? Well the big three for me at least are the obvious bookshelves, but that is a little bit slow and tedious. Another good alternative is to look out for the Navisgain paper mill POI, 
this place is absolutely packed with paper. The final option is one you may never have thought of, but it's pretty obvious when you think about it. ATMs. They're filled with money. Yes, you can sell the money for dukes, but I find paper to actually be much more uncommon and much more useful than dukes, especially on shotgun builds. Just break them open and steal the cash inside, and you can scrap the money for paper. Number 15, Bob's Boars and Carl's Corn. By far the best food POI in the game, you'll come out the other side of this with more meat, animal fat and bones than you can carry. It looks like this, it says Bob's Boars and Carl's Corn on the front. Just make sure you have a good gun, because the boars in there can be pretty nasty if you're playing on higher difficulties. And Grace, well, Grace speaks for herself, really. Number 16, blocks have stability, which you probably did know. However, the amount of horizontal support a block has is listed in its stats. The amount of mass a block has is listed there too. Horizontal support is how much mass, i.e. other blocks, that block can hold on each of its four sides. You can see the stability of a block as you place it. If it's got a yellow ghost, you're kind of pushing it. If it's got a red ghost, that block will collapse when you place it, bringing many other blocks down with it. Also, so purple means that, that block will just fall and break. Number 17, every mod you attach to a weapon or a tool will increase its damage by about 10%. So even if it seems a little unhelpful, like a grave digger on a bone knife, it is a good idea to just throw it on there to maximize your weapon's damage until you find something a bit more appropriate. This does not work for armor by the way, it will not increase your armor rating unless it's very explicitly an armor plating mod. Number 18, not all items are created equally. Just because you have two level 6 steel clubs does not mean they are the same. There's a mechanic in this game called variable statistics, and it means that more advanced items can actually be up to 15% worse or up to 15% better than the base stat of the weapon. So be sure to compare weapons and armor if you find a duplicate before throwing it away because you may actually have a very bad version of that weapon. In general though, this does not apply to primitive stuff like stone tools, pipe weapons and padded armor. Number 19, speaking of padded armor, get some as soon as possible. Padded armor at level 1 will give you 25.5% damage resistance from a full set. The biggest cost for this is going to be the 5 duct tape to get the full set, which is not a lot, so make some or at least find some as soon as possible, especially if you play on high difficulties. 25% damage resistance will only save you 2 or 3 health per hit on Nomad difficulty, but 25% damage resistance on Insane will save you 6 health per hit, enough to let you survive a couple more hits on a difficulty where you die in four. Number 20, you can see ores on the map. If you see a black dot, that's coal. If you see a brown dot, that's iron. A white dot is nitrate, a blue grey dot is lead, a slightly darker beige than the rest of the desert annoyingly is oil shale, and stone is grey, grass is green, water is blue. Those last three aren't ores, but you know, they're also on the map if you're looking for them. Number 21, electrical components or relays can only accept one wire going into it, so you might need a lot more relays than you think when you're building a base. Also, an electrical component can only have nine wires coming out of it, which does become very messy by the way. Speaking of wires, number 22, wires can only reach 10 meters before they turn red, but you can actually stretch it out. If you stand just before the 10 meters mark, you can reach over and extend over to about 15 meters, which you would not be able to do if you just stood at the 15 meter mark itself because the wire would be shown in red. Number 23, the loot stage cap. Loot stage stops doing anything helpful at loot stage 289. This means that if you're like level 200, there's no real need to go to the wasteland to get the biome loot stage multiplier, so you may as well go to the desert at that point and get the much weaker loot stage boost, but it'll be the same loot and it'll be a bit safer. If you have no idea what I mean by loot stage, check out this video popping up when you're done with this one, and hey, while I have you, if you're enjoying this video and finding it valuable, do me a favour and hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, and maybe even the like button. It really does help help me out and it'll really help you stay up to date on my latest videos. Number 24, fear is very very powerful. It'll give you 300% more damage with your fists, but the stamina boost will also make it so that you can cycle or sprint pretty much infinitely and attack for much longer with other melee weapons. Get some beer, it's very helpful, especially on Horde Nights. And number 25, Wasteland Treasures Volume 3 will let you gather acid from cars with a wrench, from acid barrels with a wrench, or from medical cabinets with basically any tool or weapon. Once you find this book, you will never struggle for acid again. So now that I've thrown 25 tips at you, how about I throw 10 more with 10 more tips I wish I knew when I started out in 7 Days to Die. Check it out popping up on the right. Thank you to my channel members and patrons for making this video possible, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.